Okay. So now we will learn chapter five, that is filing insurance claims. Now, this is a very easy chapter. It is something that is practical in nature. How can a person or how can the insured claim his insurance policy or how can one file insurance claims? Now, the primary step, for example, say um, there is an accident. So a motor vehicle accident. So the primary step, the first step that a person will do, of course, is to intimate to the uh, you know, the nearest authoritative body of the police department. And then you take the other steps, uh, you know, of filing it, filing the claim, filing the necessary papers with the insurance company. How? By obtaining relevant reports from the police and so on. There has to be an investigation. And then you file those investigation uh, reports along with your insurance claim, right? So, when filing an insurance claim, the most primary thing, uh, you know, at the first stage a person would do is intimate to or report the matter to the nearest authoritative body or the police department in case of an accident related policy, a personal claim, fire accident and so on. So policy reports and all relevant investigation reports must be obtained by the insured. The second step, or sometimes, you know, it takes place concurrently or simultaneously together with the first step, that is filing an application of claim with the insurer or the insurance company. Now, fault or no fault is assessed at this stage. Now, whose fault it is and whose fault it is not. So here it is assessed at this stage. Now, upon receipt of the application, the claims adjuster will be delegated. There will be a person called claims adjuster and he will be delegated on behalf of the insurance company to investigate the claim further. The claim adjuster may interview the claimant or the policy holder and any other witnesses and prepare relevant reports based on his or her study. That means there is a claims adjuster who is appointed for the purpose of studying the claim and uh, this claims adjuster will, you know, engage in a questioning process or an interview with the claimant or the policyholder and gather all relevant material in the course of his questioning, depending upon the replies that is given by the policyholder or the claimant. Then the claims adjuster will gather material evidence in the form of medical evidence in case, you know, the particular case requires a medical evidence to be provided or carry out site inspection. Medical evidence, for example, in case of accidents, carry out site inspection. Say, for example, you know, property is damaged, fire has just, you know, damaged property, that's it. So then he would, you know, gather site inspections and all relevant inspections would be done and he would gather information also from the police and then submit it to the insurance company underwriters. So in some cases, the claims adjuster plays the role of the underwriter and then finally a conclusion is drawn as to the legitimacy or the legality of the claim and accordingly he will calculate compensation. Are you understanding me? So, so first step here is of course to intimate it, intimate the matter or report the incident to the nearest authoritative body or the police department. And the second sample step or a second individual step would be file a claim with the insurance company, depending upon the type of um, claim it is. And then there is a claims adjuster who is appointed and he'll be delegated on behalf of the insurance company to investigate the claim further. And he would be preparing a report and submit it to the underwriters of the insurance company and at times, the claims adjuster himself would be the, you know, the underwriter for an insurance company. At the third stage, either the claim is approved 
or rejected or more information is sought. So thereby here at the third step, based on all the evidence that is collected, the insurance company may directly approve or calculatively disburse the amount. If more information is sought, then the insured must comply with the request and provide all relevant information that is being sought. And both the parties are expected to not delay the matter or procrastinate and act legitimately within the purview of law and the policy contract. Conflict resolution of any, that is in case of rejection or less amount is approved and so on. Next is in, in case of conflicts, in the case that the insured senses the probability of injuries or damage assessment and the impact is being unfairly represented and handled, then the insured party may take recourse to legal help. Say so they feel that you no, know, uh, this justice is not done to them, so the party might knock the doors of the court. Further, in case the dispersal report is handed over to the insured and the insured party is dissatisfied with the claim, then the party can file an application highlighting the discrepancy and or the dissatisfaction with evidence. Then there can be court intervention. If the conflict is not resolved, the matter may or may not be resolved internally, it depends, and it may grow into a dispute and court's intervention may be needed. Most of the times it goes to the court, but it depends whether, uh, you know, the parties try to, you know, resolve the dispute, the conflict between themselves. Now, if the conflict is resolved, then at the stage, a settlement agreement is drawn and amount is negotiated and the amount is released and disbursed to the insured. In case of a suit filed before the court, the proceedings will be initiated and the parties will have to wait for the final judgment or decree. And then the agreed party may file an appeal or move an application of execution of the decree. That means it's a process. You file a case and then you wait for the judgment and then suppose a party is not happy, whichever party it is, the party who is not happy with the judgment would go in for an appeal. And uh, in case there is no appeal, then the party might apply for execution of the decree. That is, they would say, okay, let us file an application for moving ahead with the decree or the judgment of the court. Execution, it's called execution of the decree. Now, it may happen that during the litigation, the parties may seek a compromise and may decide to close the matter by filing a settlement agreement that has been negotiated between the parties. So with the intervention of the court, the settlement amount will be released to the petitioner or the insured. So the claims procedure, therefore, varies depending upon the type of insurance proposed, the loss or damage that is caused and or the maturity of the policy. What are the defenses of the insurer, that is the insurance company? What kind of defenses or um, what are the defenses that are available to the insurance company? The principles of contract law will be applicable even in insurance contracts, as we studied earlier, and the courts are inclined to interpret the insurance contract. So some of the defenses that are available for the insurer for denying or rejecting a claim are as follows. One is invalid documents produced. Second is there is misrepresentation. Or third, there is element of fraud. Or, you know, um, there is non-disclosure of vital information. I remember last class, I told you that, uh, you know, all mandatory information must be disclosed. Uh, there should be no concealment of relevant facts. So non-disclosure of vital information that was mandatory to be disclosed for deciding on granting the insurance policy. And in case this concealment of relevant facts, so that would be a kind of a defense to the insurance company saying that we denied the insurance uh, you know, claim because there was non-disclosure of vital information and there was concealment of relevant facts. So this would be a defense for the insurance company against the claim. Next is incontestability by virtue of the incontestable clause, which is present in an insurance contract. That means one cannot contest the claim. Next is lack of coverage. That is, the policy is not enough or is it's not widely covering the particular claim. And next is 
proximate cause is not established. And what is lack of coverage? For example, there is health insurance policy. Say now, um, uh, it's um basic health insurance policy, and it does not cover, say, dental insurance. So suppose a party makes a claim saying that no, the insurance company had to even cover up my, you know, dental expenses. So then the insurance company would point blank deny it point blank deny it on the grounds that the uh, insurance policy is not wide enough to include dental expenses as well. So that is on the grounds of lack of coverage. And the last one is proximate cause is not established. So these are some of the defenses of the insurer. So this is how an insurance claim is filed. First is reporting to the nearest authority, police, basically. Police reports are generated. Other investigation reports are generated. As a second step, there is filing of claim. It can happen simultaneously where even the claims adjuster is appointed. At the third stage, either the claim is approved or rejected. Fourth stage, if it is rejected and there is a conflict, then there is conflict resolution uh, between the party and the insurance company or the insurer and the insured. And in case the conflict is not resolved, the parties might knock the doors of the court, that is court intervention may be solicited and an application may be filed and so on. And a judgment or a decree may be passed. And again, depending upon the judgment, the decree, they can be appeal or they can be directly execution of the decree. And some of the defenses, as I said earlier, is for the def uh, for the insurance company is invalid documents, uh, misrepresentation, fraud, concealment of relevant facts, or non-disclosure of vital information, <clears throat> incontestability by virtue of incontestable clause, lack of coverage, and proximate cause not established. So this is an, a very important question. What is insurance contract? What are the elements of insurance contract? General elements and specific elements. And apart from that, you'll have to know the procedure for filing insurance claim. This is very important because this is a practical question, examination point of view, as well as you must know how, how insurance claims are filed. What's the general procedure, at least the outline, right? So any questions so far? Okay, so um, write your names in the chat box. Let me check it. Before you exit, write your names in the chat box and we will meet next class same time. Thank you. Write your names in the chat box.